Hi everyone, today I'm going to be drawing this red rose bed using colored pencils. I am using Prismacolor and Polychromos to draw this on Rising Museum Mount Board. You can see me starting here with my Polychromos dark red pencil. I used very few pencils in this drawing. My goal here was to create a beginner tutorial piece for my Patreon page, something that's really easy for you to follow along with. So I was just trying to keep things as simple as possible. And I'm just blocking in my shadow areas of the rosebud with this pencil. You can see me this part right here just going over the outline that I have traced in here to begin with using really light pressure with that pencil. The museum mount board um, takes a lot of layers and it also, each layer of pencil deposits a little bit more pigment on this paper than some of the other papers that I'm used to working on. So it just kind of um, attracts that pigment really easily. There I'm adding a layer of the white Prismacolor into the highlighted areas of the drawing. There you can see my color swatches that I was working with. I drew this from a black and white image. Um, part of the tutorial was to talk about color and how I choose colors for the drawing. There are a few different ways that I go about doing this, but for this particular drawing, I took all of my red pencils and I created some swatches from them just to show how you could use several different combinations of pencils in order to create a really nice drawing. I like to separate my pencils into the warm tones and cool tones and then work from there. And that's kind of how I chose these. I did end up increasing the value of the overall piece quite a bit, meaning I didn't have such bright highlights. I made the shadows a lot darker and then I took the midtones and the highlights quite a bit darker as well. But starting off here, I'm just getting everything blocked in. I'm getting a base so that you can see where the shadows and highlights are supposed to be. I did that using the dark red polychromos, the Crimson Lake from Prismacolor, and also the Crimson Alizarian from Polychromos, which is another really pretty color. I ended up going over most of that color with some darker pencils but I like the way it looked to begin with. Here I'm blending everything out with Gamsol and I just started off this way so that you could see my setup here. I have the Gamsol in a little mason jar and then I just have an old sock that I dab the brush off onto because I like to use a pretty dry brush when I'm blending with Gamsol. There's not a lot of Gamsol on that brush this is a tiny little Winsor and Newton number two round miniature and then actually this brush that I'm working with right here is a Royal and Langnickel number two filbert. You just want to find a brush that is stiff enough um, that it will actually get in there and really dissolve the pigment. You don't want a floppy brush when you're trying to blend things out with Gamsol and moving the paper so I can have a better angle for my hand. And you can see how this takes this from more of a colored pencil drawing to something that looks a little bit more like a painting. Gives me a really nice smooth base to now go over with my second layers of pencil. And you're gonna see me really start to darken this value up. Right now, this rosebud is looking closer to a pink especially in those highlighted areas. And I wanted it to be a more 
traditional deep dark red. Now these colors I think are actually really pretty. So I could have continued along that direction if I wanted to, but I really did just want to darken this up and again have that nice traditional deep red rose. And here you're going to be able to see that transformation start to take place. That is my Prismacolor Crimson Lake. That's one of the colors that I initially intended to be more of a shadow color. And I just increased the overall value of this piece by making that more of a mid-tone color. And then I used some 90% cool gray and some of the Prismacolor Tuscan Red in the shadow areas to bring those up value-wise so that the whole piece had a little bit of contrast. So just working over everything with these colors. This was layer upon layer upon layer. I did so many layers on this piece. There's that 90% cool gray just using a very light touch when I'm using that pencil. And if you get things a little bit too dark, you can come back through with an eraser and lighten it back up a little bit. But I'm going to take everything um, a little darker here to um, make it so that that contrast isn't quite as extreme as it looks like it is right here. So I'm coming back over everything with the polychromos dark red again that's a color that I initially intended for the shadow areas and I do have a lot of it in the shadow areas but just increasing the value of the overall rose and you can see how it's starting to look more like a traditional dark red rose rather than a pink the purpose of this tutorial was to just show you that it doesn't really matter the exact color choices you make for these drawings as long as you have um, some different values, as long as you have something for the shadows and something for the midtones and something for the highlights. And the other thing that I'm always telling people that seems to be an obvious thing, but just, I don't know, it helps me to think of it this way, is just make sure that everything looks good together. I like to make swatches and if a color stands out within that swatch that I just don't like the way it looks with the rest of the colors, I'm gonna kick it out. So putting everything together that you're planning to use in a drawing and if everything looks good on your swatch, it's probably gonna look good together on your drawing. And occasionally you'll want an outlier pencil just to add a little bit of interest. So there's that too. So here I'm coming over with a layer of this white and it ended up creating kind of a waxy look. Um, maybe a little bit of like a waxy bloom that I didn't want. So back over with the Crimson Lake. Just decided that I didn't need that highlight to be quite so extreme. And just again, layer, 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 just to get that nice, deep, rich color. And one more time with the Crimson Lake. And now moving on to the leaves. For the leaves, I used a combination of the Prismacolor. That's the gray-green light. I was using that in the highlighted areas. I also used Prismacolor Dark Green and the Polychromos, that's Pine Green. I like to have a combination of those pencils. The Prismacolor is really great for nice smooth blending getting lots of pigment down on the paper and the polychromos holds a really nice sharp point 
I really like to have very sharp edges on my drawings. I like to have clean edges. I don't like to have anything that is um, smudgy looking. So I like to come over everything where I can with those really sharp polychromos pencils. I was also using some more of that 90% gray. There's where one of my pencils broke, which caused a little bit of a mistake, but I just worked around it and kept moving. Don't let those mistakes throw you off too much. It wasn't really a mistake, it was my pencil broke. And sometimes that's going to happen. I really love the leaves on this drawing. I drew this last year in yellow and really liked it. I think the leaves set everything off, make it a really interesting composition, even though it's just a little rosebud. So I decided to come back through and draw it in red. So if it looks familiar, that's probably the reason why. You've probably seen me draw this in yellow. Now starting to work on this stem, which was really easy. It's just kind of a shadow side and a um, little bit lighter side. Getting all of the pigment down on the paper before I blend with the Gamsol. Any kind of solvent will work. And if you don't like to work with solvent or don't have solvent, then you can just keep layering your pencil until you get this nice smooth look. This just helps things move along a little bit faster and dissolves the pigment. And I use it in almost every piece. I'm thinking about possibly drawing something without it at some point. Every time I think I'm going to do that, though, I end up coming straight back to it. I love working with solvent in my colored pencil drawings. And now after the solvent dries, I just come back through with my next layers of pencil, sharpening things up, adding detail, correcting any kind of color changes that I want to make. I kept the leaves pretty simple. Again, just using, I think it was those four pencils. It's more about the shape for these leaves than it is the actual colors that are in there. and finish thing that up. Here I'm just doing a little bit of a demonstration. There's a bonus video attached to this drawing on Patreon where I am swatching out all of my colors and doing a little bit of a demonstration on how I would go about choosing colors to use for this drawing. So that's just a little bonus if you are interested in learning how to draw this yourself you will find that on my Patreon page. I have four different brands of pencils I work with, Prismacolor, Polychromos, Derwent Lightfast, and Caran d'Ache Luminance. So I swatched out all of my reds and went through each brand and talked about the choices that I would make in combination for each of those brands and then how I ultimately put them together to draw my rose. And there is the finished drawing. Thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer those there. And I will see you next week with another drawing. Bye.